Hello and good morning. This is week eight, and in this lab, we will draw electrical schematics. So, after completing this lab, you'll understand how to draw and read electrical schematics, and this pertains to the same chapter on theory and control in electricity for refrigeration and heating and air conditioning. So, if you can follow up on that, you should be okay understanding how those schematics run through. Okay. So, theoretical object, uh, objective of this lab, you will trace actual wiring on a control and you will learn how this control actually uh, transfer into schematics. So, we will get a piece of equipment and we'll use that equipment to do schematics. So, read factual schematic and there's a difference between factual and uh, lateral schematics, we'll learn about that when it comes to types of schematics. Uh, we also find information. How do we find information about what are the components, what they look like, what does this mean? Uh, in the field, you will run into a situation where you have to follow installation diagrams or schematics in order to install your equipment. You also will learn how to locate symbols and words. What do they mean? What does that symbol pertain? And it's going to be different from one factory to another. So there's always something called a legend that will give you They'll give you a map of what's being drawn. Uh, follow the current electrical map. It's like a map, and it'll show a direction of what's happening inside that circuit. Current is always trying to find its way from the source to the sink. So from if it's uh, DC, it's going to be from minus to positive. If it's alternating, there's always a hot and neutral. So uh, again, different wiring for AC and uh, between AC and DC. So the hands-on objective I'll give you an aquastat and it will have all the components it's very old-fashioned so you can see the components and how they function and we'll trace the components and by doing so we will trace how does it work and how is it wired and hopefully that will help you understand how schematics are drawn and what's happening actually on paper. It's really big transition to be able to translate what's on paper into actual equipment. We'll also test that equipment for continuity and resistance on actual component. It makes things a little bit more realistic to see how do they function and actually what's happening in those components. And again, this is an aquastat from an old fashion. So you see all the components the way they are. The new ones are really hard to trace because they're mostly uh, uh, chips and uh, integrated circuits. So the old ones actually are better to learn on. Okay, schematics, we'll trace actual wiring. We'll read factual schematics, which means what actually is installed. We'll find also information. Where would you find information? Usually, if you download the manual or the schematic for that wiring, you will know what is what components are installed, what is the voltage, and so on. Uh, you will also have symbols and words. Uh, what is a capacitor? What is a symbol for a capacitor? And so on. Symbols and words. Again, in electrical diagrams and schematics, we do not like to write everything down because the, the, the drawing will be, will be very crowded. It's like when you look at Google Maps, you see sometimes there are symbols for a street, for traffic light, for uh, intersection. If everything is written down to make things a little bit more complicated, it will be very crowded. And if you look at some details diagram, you'll see it's very, very crowded and it makes things a little bit difficult to trace. Okay, uh, what else? Here, let's go. Click on this. Uh, you follow the map again, and usually when you have a map, where do you start? You start on finding where you are, and in schematics, where you are is the source. So you follow the power from the source all the way to the components, and from the components, you can see also trace the path all the way to from hot to neutral, from negative to positive, and so on. Again, trying the current trying to find its way from negative to positive. Steps start from the power. Look at the, lo uh, the loads. What are your loads? So it's good to know what is your load. The load is a resistance, capacitors, transformer, relay. Those are all loads. Loads are components that actually use power to do something. Either open or close circuit or do a control or change the power or heat or so on. Uh, power source could be a battery, transformer, or an outlet. So again, you start from the power all the way to the component. And we said there are three components for every electrical circuit source path and load there is no path there is no circuit there is no load there is no point of the circuit there is no power everything is dead okay makes sense turns and switches 
we have switches we have turns we have logic and we will look at that as we go further uh, we will spend the whole week talking about uh, capacitors and talking about uh, relays and contactors and they do a lot of control and they again we said every circuit is a combination circuit there is a series circuit and also parallel circuit and they go actually as uh, sub circuits as well okay so relays they can relays uh, is basically a gate between two circuits and a communication between two circuits from one place to another uh, the ground or the sig is where you complete your circuit if you are a radio in a car car is DC right so you might have only one source for power but you always have to have a ground the ground is usually the car body so the ground is a path a complete path for the water to go through so if you look at the again I always use the water analogy if you go look at the faucet in your sink if there is no drainage then you have a problem so you want to have source and also sink in your car since it's DC you have a power source from the battery and you need to have a ground the ground is usually the car body because it's so big it will take that the rest of that current we also want to pay attention to colors and be consistent with these colors usually uh, a lot of those wires are color coded to make things a little bit easier for the technician to realize what are the wires and which load does it go to so be very diligent with that and the more organized you are into labeling things and following the colors the better things will function it gets a little bit intricate if you ever wired a furnace uh, a gas furnace with uh, an AC you'll see how it gets a little bit uh, involved so make sure you, you adhere to color codes and make things a little bit clear for you and the person uh, coming after you okay uh, this is from the book and actually you see here these are symbols for a lot of uh, switches and relays here we have uh, throw switches which is switches that does on and off thermostat got a uh, heating thermostat a cooling thermostat pressure switches, toggle switches, push buttons, and so on. So we will go through these little by little, but it's really important for you to understand how do these actually are labeled on, on uh, schematics. And again, they're not always the same. Some of them are always the same, but some of them, they change from one industry to another. So let's uh, look at that and try to remember those symbols. Some of them are very, like thermostat usually are the same. They don't change that much. Uh, this usually symbolizes uh, resistance. This could be for a motor, but I've seen another one for motors, LEDs, fuse, and relay switches. Uh, I will try to emphasize relays and contacts are very, very important for us because we always have controls and we have low voltage and high voltage. And again, this is a transformer. Uh, what does a transformer do? It step up the voltage or step down the voltage. So this is a simple schematic for primary control. So let's look at it. It looks from the first time you look at it, it's kind of complicated. There's a lot of things going on, but try not to look too close. Let's look at the source, as we said. So in here, we see that our source in here is, let me get my pen. Look, this is, uh, so this is my source here. Somehow it's not working. Never mind. Okay, so the source you, you can see it here as I'm highlighting. L1 is the hot, and you see how the power goes all the way to the control. And at the end, you always need to have neutral, otherwise things will not work the way they're supposed to be. So if we trace here the hot, the hot going through a contactor, and the black here is the hot going this control we do not want to bother ourselves with what's inside the control but it's important for us to know what is being used so TT is the thermostat so we know the terminals that says TT should connect to the thermostat FF is the cat cell and the black is power and white is neutral and it goes all the way here to neutral if this fan motor get power but it doesn't get neutral what's going to happen it's not going to work okay always think of a complete circuit let's see this is again one of the old-fashioned controls and it's it's called a stack relay because it goes into the stack the flow stack with the hot air and if you can see there's a switch here bush button switch and two relays we'll get very close to this equipment and look at them 
And again, I like the old fashioned ones for learning because you get to learn the components and how they function and what actually is happening inside these components. Uh, so this is what are we going to look at. I'm going to give you one of those and I want you to trace the power. If you look at the back of this board, you will see all the connections. So here is my L1, which is the power. and L2 is the neutral. So this is my entrance to this board. TT is for the thermostat. What is this? A transformer, relay, and output terminals. And here we have some control switches. So do not get overwhelmed when you look at this component. Try to stare at, stare at it a little bit and see what are those components and what goes where. And if you see, this is very old-fashioned, so the wires actually are used as actual wires. You know, it's not a printed circuit. Okay? And this is the schematic for what we just saw before. So these are the terminals that we saw in the bottom. This is L1 and L2. And these are the switches that you saw in the middle. And this is the transformer that was actually in here, over here. So things get translated from the physical form into their schematic form. So it's good to have this transition. And again, as you get exposed to it, the more you understand how does it function and what does the and of course this looks much confusing because you don't know what is that trans translate into. But as you gain more experience, you understand what each symbol means. So I know this is a transformer, this is a relay. So this is my transformer here, and this is my relay. It gets transformed to this little symbol. Okay. So, at the end of doing this lab, you will be able to have full schematic diagram of what you, whatever control you got, understand some electrical components that we will be using and what is their function, and you get to test them as well. And hopefully, you'll feel comfortable with electrical equipment and simple controls and also schematics. So, we will build up on reading schematics and not be overwhelmed by looking at schematics. All right, thank you.